and we are live. And I told you it was going to look a bit weird, so we're going to have to. No, you're oh, going no, to wrong way, you, wrong you're way. Come okay. this way. You're going to come this way. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, like we're Tetris. live. We're live. We're live, Gemma. So, with it, <laughs> the screen always looks different. So, um, and thanks for checking in for Tuesday night live chats. Today, I have a special guest with us. I have a few little things to start the the evening off. Um, so, yeah, I'll wait for a few people to come online. And this looks a little bit different than what you'd see on your it's device. Weird. I'm trying to like look at it, and it's like. Yeah. Usually I had the number in the top, like in this bit here. There's like a yeah. number of how many people. Yeah, it's down here. It takes a little while for people to log in. Sometimes it's, you know, um, delayed. Sometimes it doesn't get out to that many people because we might be censored. Or... I never get a notification with yeah. my life. I just got a notification for myself from, um, actually, no, that's nothing to no. do with me. Yeah, that's not me. But I never get yours at all. Okay. Well, welcome, alive, welcome aboard, everyone. Uh, I can see everyone starting to come on board. If you're not getting the notifications about this, uh, push the little bell icon. Make sure you follow the page and you are here for um, you know, alerts. Make sure you're getting the alerts. So thanks a lot for tuning in to this week's uh, episode. We have a little comment section down here where people write in. So we've got two people here writing in oh, so far. Good. You're not staring at yourself the whole time. Oh, I do stare at myself to make sure that I haven't got off the screen or anything like that. So, But um, today, guys, I have got uh, Gemma from our office. Uh, this is Gemma. She is an oh. investor relation manager in our office and uh, helps a lot of you guys in the community. So um, I said this year I wanted to make sure that we have you know, more exposure of our team and those that help our community. And um, yeah, with it, Gemma is one of the people in the back end of the office that you don't get to see often. Um, but yeah, today I've got some questions uh, for Gemma. We've got lots of questions from the community that we're going to be uh, answering. And um, yeah, with it, uh, we'll get straight into it. So I always start off with a few news articles and last week I pumped like the whole episode was about <laughs> news articles about different things over the years. Um, today I've only got one news article so I'm going to read it to you first and to everyone and um, yeah just get into it. So this one here is uh, from Wall Street Journal. Uh, I will not pay to subscribe to these news outlets. Uh, it's got a paywall on it. it says Fed's balance sheet reduction may stop early as recession risk rises. And then we'll just go and read. I've got a bit of it on my device here. It says here, the increasing risk of a recession could mean the Federal Reserve ends its balance sheet runoff sooner than expected. Economists with forecasting firm LH Meyer write, they see a recession as likely in 2024, but acknowledge that there isn't a simple scenario in which the central bank stops shrinking its balance sheet. But they were, but they write it, they write that it is possible to halt happens next year and note if the standing repo facility currently unused springs to life it could suggest reserves are running short and the fed will need to stop draining them so what does this all mean now uh, i've been coming out saying in these lives don't be too concerned because they're doing quantitative tightening at the moment so we've seen two years or three years of quantitative easing where the central banks around the world just keep printing money constantly and that's why everyone feels like they're so smart they're the best investor in the world i've bought the best property i'm so cool whatever um but it's really to do with the liquidity that's floating around in the system they've now taken that away with interest rate rises and all these different things which is causing a recession not just in the property market but in all markets um, which is the exciting part right i said that this could last for maybe 12 months 18 months 24 months the longer this goes on the more the rates go up, the bigger the problem is going to be caused, the more that they're going to have to suppress it. And then we're going to see uh, more money printing like we've just seen because they can't even take it away now because they just keep printing so much of it. Everyone's stuck to this cheap, you know, debt, mm. you know, fueled party. And, um, you know, now we're sitting at a position where, you know, it's going to cause a massive crash. They come in, they print off more money to stop the crash, and that's going to cause the biggest boom in our lives and it's going to cause hyperinflation. So really um, cool. Uh, so that's just my first article. That's all I've got today. And we'll move on. Why to... do they say the increase in risk of recession? The increasing risk of... It like, it's not risk in a life that's going to be fairly certain. Yeah. So 
that's the thing about Gemma here. I was about to introduce you and go more into oh, detail sorry. about what Gemma does, but this is what Gemma does on a daily basis by asking me lots of questions, right? And always really good questions, right? And she's trying to shy away from the camera <laughs> now. Just... But um, the question is, you know, why? what was it again? Like, why is this? Why is it always like the increase in risk of recession and, yeah. you know, the the possibility of inflation? Like, well, there's a good question, right? That's the whole premise of this. Why I scream and yell and laugh and have fun with it, right? Because the more that they push up the interest rates, the more expenses it is for mm -hmm. everyone. So if you're a business, right, and let's say, I know you're a restaurant or a building company mm -hmm. or whatever, you've now got the cost of wages going up. Mm -hmm. You've got the cost of um, goods going up, you know, lettuce at 10 bucks or whatever. Um, now you've got the cost of your loans that are going up. Mm -hmm. It's just fueling inflation because the cost of everything's going mm -hmm. up. But now people are at a position where they go, well, I can't afford to pay my car, so their car's going to get repossessed. I can't afford to, um, to, you know, feed, pay the. It's either to go out for dinner this week or to pay the extra interest rate. So they go, well, we've got to keep the house over our head, so we can't go out. Mm -hmm. So it's a tightening of funds that are out there. It's a lack of funds, so it's causing a recession. Like, why are they saying there's a risk of it? Because like, isn't it like fairly? It's Obvious. imminent, yeah, but yeah. that's what they're saying. It's a risk, oh, like right. it's a very high risk okay. that we're going to have a I recession. I thought they were trying to still play on the. Oh no, oh, we're going to save it, but no, the economy's no fucked. All oh, right, yeah, yeah no. the economy's <laughs> fucked. So that's the reality of it: is yeah. the economy's screwed, and people, um, you know, are in a recession. So yeah, that's um, we we can't see the the fact of a recession yet because the day, like it takes like three months and six mm. months for data to flow through and recession is technically two quarters so two lots of three months worth of negative growth mm -hmm. so this will start flowing through right yeah. they talk about builders that are going to be screwed already i've had word from builders that they haven't sold a house for two two months right imagine being a building company selling houses here's your house to be built right they haven't built they haven't sold a house for two months but they're already fucked right so just think about that so the builders aren't doing it tough already right they get yeah. into trouble so then the tradies aren't building anymore their costs of goods have gone up all these expenses right it means their ute gets repossessed they have to sell the ute right there's too many utes on the market it means the ute price falls down so yeah. everything starts crashing if everything starts crashing the whole central bankers game blows up so they have to have people jump against a big ponzi scheme so the what they have to do is change it from a tightening position to printing more money and getting out there quicker but now they've got a bigger hole to fill because of the problem that they caused last time by printing so much money and so much debt. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're just tuning in, there's more people tuning in. This is Gemma, uh, our investor relations manager. And um, you know she helps a lot of our investors on their journey. So you've seen Jeremy this year. Uh, he's the, the, the fun and uh, eccentric guy. We've got Wayne, which we met um a few months ago or a few weeks ago actually well. we've had patrick before but he hasn't been on recently um but we've it got patrick. off of summer, didn't it? The, the oh, that was on the failed. webinar that was on a webinar right okay so not I just thought you were leaving the best one to like the last like oh, well building they say, up to a... they say if you don't want to see it you know i think that all of you are great right. <laughs> <laughs> no but we've got pat we've got we've got charlie still yeah, pat had his chance the technology went wrong yeah okay. he hasn't been on here though he went on a webinar yeah <laughs> Um, <laughs> so you can see in our office it's fun, um, but I wanted to bring Gemma on today. So today is all about questions from the community. I have got lists of questions here from you guys, and I expect that um, that you guys will write more comments down. So any questions you've got tonight, put them in the comment box, and we'll answer them or I'll attempt to. Um, but I wanted to ask, I wanted to get Gemma on because how long have you been? with the company for now roughly uh, just over two years over two years okay cool i always hang shit on Gemma. she'll turn red now right because she knows what i'm going to talk about out. when Gemma first started there's a couple like we went on a big recruitment drive and we had sort of um a few of you guys that started at the same time and um well i was in the boardroom talking about you know drawing on the wall what do we do at be invested how do we build a property portfolio whatever and i drew that you could buy prop you buy 10 properties 200 grand a piece pull out the equity everyone's on 50 grand 100 grand the year incomes whatever and we build these large portfolios 
And then he said, what's the cheapest house we bought? And I said, I've got a unit for $15,000, right? And I said, this unit's for 15 grand. They previously sold for like 150 grand. And Gemma, she loves just saying things as they are. And she goes, listen, mate, that all sounds good and well, but I'm calling bullshit, right? You sound like a scammer or something. Right? I was like, you just called it out and you go, you sounds like bullshit. I've never heard of this happen beforehand. She goes, oh, I'm sorry. Like, this it is was a... definitely, you should have thought about it before engaging. <laughs> My mouth. And she's like, do I leave now? Are you, am I going to get sacked? Right? I actually thought you were going to match me out for sure. I yeah. was like, wow, this, this this is really good start, right? But why did you say that? Like, I'm still asking. Because, well, actually, to be fair, yeah. I'm glad I did think that. Because I imagine there's a lot of people on that side yeah. that do think that. Yeah. So I'm glad that I went from like pure scepticism. Yeah. Like I have just been recruited into some kind of... Yeah, I don't know what it was. I was like, "Oh, honey, I need to get out." But <laughs> it worked out. It, I kind of went through the journey that I imagine if someone stumbles across you, yeah, would be like, yeah. "What's wrong with him?" Do you know <laughs> what I mean? But at least I I did the whole journey right now that I'm like, "Well, I don't listen to any other yeah. strategy because I've seen it for myself." Yeah, the only challenge of that is that the other the prospective clients don't see it firsthand like I do from yeah. inside That's the up. business. But, um, I'm actually so, glad because yeah. it's good. Yeah, keep what did you what do you know about property when you first started? You two and, and a half all. years. Fuck all. all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You can swear it, it is live. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, not very much. I've given you a potty though. mouth. Yeah. Well, I had one anyway, but I, I always had to suppress it. Okay. Because I worked, you know, in places yeah. where I wasn't allowed to. Yeah. It's amazing what happens when you give free rein to someone. <laughs> yeah, and I think. One of the things I remember once we had a staff outing and we were having dinner and uh, it was like a big team event just across in the lake there. And I was talking to you about certain news articles and about the world that we lived in. Mm -hmm. You lived a very sheltered life and you were like, what? Right? There's people that are like that in the world. <laughs> and you, you started in researching obviously the last two and a half years. Like there's been lots of crazy things happening. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the world isn't how it used to be. And you've like, woken up you know like, i can't look at the world i can't watch tv i can't you see this destroyed my outlook on the world yeah. whether that's good or bad yeah um sorry no because in a lot of respects with that comes the territory of literally like literally yeah. to some degree saving yeah. my life but yeah. we won't go into that um yeah. talking about should we should we do little gestures hand gestures <laughs> like talking about saving a life right yeah which <laughs> this in is turn... a little this is a screwdriver by the way you know. <laughs> Well, yeah. I ain't, I ain't doing shots over here. <laughs> well, and I think in some challenges come with that, and I think it's always you're always evolving and thing. I'm I'll put it out that I'm like I'm a pariah, like yeah. to yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Um. But what's been really good is that the, the community here that I don't actually feel yeah. like to me everybody else is weird now. Okay, that's good. No, like it, it's not. But it's you, not that like it's not good. But you can just fit in, right? And that's why I think the society just goes you've got to fit in you've got yeah. to obey yeah, without yeah. Bl with blind faith right people are obeying and and blind faith is out you're going to get a job and you know i've still got this thing here from a few months ago which was the this uh this chart right which everyone thinks is a politician when the elections were on there's the mm -hmm. politician and i was like yep. well i don't care about the politician i'm thinking about the corporation the banking elite and the people that pull the strings right and that's where everyone fits in with blind faith they're getting told a yep. a, a, a voice so yeah Cool. Yeah. So you know, fuck all about property. You can't get to knew. enough. Not to know. I knew. You knew. Yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Past tense. Past tense. Yeah. You I knew. Been promoting me here, Jesus. Of course. Why? I'm really okay, proud. I'm really proud of your journey, right? Because it took you a while to, you know, go. Wow, this guy's, you know, sounds like he's on another planet. Then you're like, on drugs. yeah, on drugs. And you know, some people have accused me on drugs over the years on YouTube and Facebook and all that stuff, like, get off drugs, you know, whatever. I always think it'd be funny, magic also drugs, right? It's, uh, I don't want funny. to, it's fine. No. <laughs> um, but then, you know, you started seeing the results of your investors. You look after many investors. What's mm -hmm. your largest investor's portfolio, without mentioning your names, what would be some of the, the stories that you have single-handedly been a part of, right? Like, naturally here, as the business works just for the community, think about the, your investors and the how big and what they yeah. started with and what they went to. So uh, um, I do all the deals and do the strategy. Gemma's there to help with the investor's journey, put them in the right direction, um, make sure that, you know, I can't help everyone at every minute of the day. You've got, out of the whole team, 
one thing I know about you, Gemma, is that you will take, if someone says they're going to do something and you have been entrusted with the, the faith of that, you will make sure that you protect that person with everything that they mm -hmm. can be taken care of. And that's sort of where you come in at. But you've helped clients that have had no properties. You've helped clients mm -hmm. with like three or four properties. What are some of, like, say, the top three wins that you've seen people achieve, mm -hmm. like cool stories that you've seen over the last two and a half years? Well, as the the obvious one was stayed in a very good position um, yeah. within a very short period of time, less than six months. I think it was twenty five properties by the end. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it's great to tell that story, but they can start in a very a very good position. Yeah, it's the people that are very bog standard. Like yeah. it's you know they only had thirty k in the savings, not a mill or whatever it was. So and how much? What what could someone do with fifty grand or a hundred grand that you've seen someone do? So without naming names, let's say there was one that was their income was fifty. Yeah. Um, and their savings I think was actually like twenty five. Yeah. The one that I was like, I'm so glad that we're taking care of. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, and was able had the capacity to do two. Yeah. In six months apart so two in 12 months kind yeah. of thing yeah. um which on the surface seemed like it wouldn't have ever been possible yeah um so that those wins although smaller by comparison are actually yeah. i think a lot bigger in yeah. other ways as well yeah um and then there's another one who actually i counted them up the other day and yeah. he's actually on eight i think okay. eight um but that was a real journey from skepticism yeah. freaking out yeah pulled out of a deal last minute because he yeah. lost his head and actually seeing him grow and just being like, no, I actually, I'm understanding it. Yeah. Now it's like itching to do more that yeah. they just can't, like they have to just wait or whatever it is. Yeah. So um, on average, I think people that are doing five, yeah. five to eight, yeah. from a position of not huge greatness, if that well, makes sense. Well, it's starting like 50K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like just no like property, normal. no mm. nothing, yeah. Yeah. Cool. And I'm gonna talk about your journey because it's important right and i think that everybody that works with us um needs to know that like it's a journey for all of my staff like i've got staff in this office that have 10 properties 20 properties um you know dropped out at school at year 10 and they're like 23 24 got you know five or six properties um some of my staff have been like "Fuck, i don't need to work here anymore i'm just gonna go and do what i want and you know follow their passion and interest you came with no property experience, you know. Fully no, indoctrinated. Fully indoctrinated into the yeah. system. Um, uh, money, you didn't come with like wads of cash here. You came Stone here. Stone broke. I only, the only money I had was when you could pull your super. Cause of the COVID. 10K, yeah. I didn't even have 10K in my super. Oh, yeah. There Being a go. foreigner, I'd yeah. only been in the country like, what, two, three years? Yeah. Nothing in it. And I think I had yeah. about 3K to my name. There we go. <laughs> that was it. So Gemma had 3K when she came here. Um, tomorrow's a special day for you. Why? Because number four is settling. Number four? Yes. And uh, so Gemma's bought four properties. Uh, when did you buy your first one? It took you a while to save up and get your first one. So July I started in February because I was going up to that for my holiday. Yeah. So it was about, it settled in April 21. So it's about one and a bit years. Yeah. That you bought your first property and then mm -hmm. you get your fourth property. Fourth. And the thing time. is, the thing is, actually, two of your properties that you bought, Gemma's got this thing with me. She's got an issue with me because her clients pulled out of deals. And I said, I'm so glad you brought this up because I want to. Because she gets her shits, right? So, two, the first two properties of Gemma's, she turned around and she's like, uh, I, I literally, the first one, a client was fucking around with the deal. And I, don't, I get upset when that happens because I literally look at it and go, like, there's 100 grand buy it right don't be stupid right so that thing i get upset it costs yeah. me a fortune exactly well you, you look at it <laughs> you make me buy it make you buy it so i said Gemma, tell them that they're not buying it and say look you got two minutes to think about it if you're gonna pull out of it i'm gonna buy it so then she calls my office says cool and then she, i called i was called over my contracts team and i said write up the contract Gemma's like what what the fuck's going on bro? what the fuck's <laughs> going on and i'm like well when you call one of your investors and say hey go buy a property today they're not expecting you to say, hey, buy a property, go buy three, go buy five. And it's important that Gemma loans. So 
you bought your first one, it's 160K for you to sell it. There's things in the area for what, 250, 300? 350. 350K now. Yeah, yeah. 350K, you paid 160? Uh, 70, I think it was. 170K. Uh, it's a half a duplex, maybe like 15, 20 years old, something like that. It's not brand new. Did you get a depreciation report? We talked I did. about tax. Okay, cool. Yeah. I did get yeah. Yeah. So, and what's the rent on it now? Uh, 300, but there's nothing for rent. For rent. So Under I'm like, what? can we like, like nothing? Yeah. There's a unit okay. for two bedroom unit that's 300. Okay. So I'm like, blink, can we yeah. just, yeah. Put it up another 50 bucks. I went for a hundred, put up to a hundred. Why, Jay? There you go. She's it's learning. She's it's learning. Not, it's not charity. So you paid one sixty. It's gone to four hundred. Three hundred now. We'll go to four hundred. Um, this is a property that our client had. Your client had dicked around. We took the client off. You bought it. The second property. How much did you pay for it? Eighty. Eight. Eighty. Eighty thousand dollars. What is it? Shithole. Shithole. What is it though? Like, is it a, a <laughs> unit sorry. or? <laughs> um, it's a house it's a three bedroom house three bedroom house for 80 grand what's it rent for at 180 180 it's a shit box right the cheapest thing for rent there is about 250 now that's for another shit hole like yours yeah. yeah but the land's worth like 50 50 that's yeah. the cheapest thing that's around the area so what's the cheapest house going in the area for now for sale Oh God, I think it was like 150. 150, and there's nothing really under 200 in that area. But, so that thing's doubled, right? And that did you go, hey, that looks like the nicest property I've ever seen in my life? Or you like, you actually called me up and you said, the client's really scared. And I said, tell the client, you're gonna fucking buy it, right? And you're like, no, I don't wanna buy it. <laughs> and it was like 130 grand property that we bought and we got a reduction for like 30, 40, 50 yeah, K. Yeah. And we've got it there. And the client threw it away. They didn't want to buy it. You went and bought it. You've now got a property. Oh, yeah, but like they were, they were nervous. Yeah. And I don't like, you know, like there's a certain level of nerves that you want to nurture. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, for yeah. For sure. Yeah. But, yeah, anyway, palming it off onto me. But it well, was actually... If um, they had confidence. It's my favourite one. <laughs> you didn't have confidence in it. They don't have confidence. You're like, it's a shit box. But that thing there is your favourite one. It's you my favourite one. I love why? it. Just because it was, it's like my 80k little shell, yeah. but it's tenanted and yeah. they're actually my best tenant. There you go, right? They don't People cost get me a scared, penny. But, yeah. yeah. And then what was the the third one we got you was? WF. It was in Perth City, right? Mm -hmm. How much is it? It was 215. 215k for a, what is it? Oh, it's a two bedroom unit. Two bedroom unit in Perth CBD. Mm -hmm. What is it rent for? Three twenty. Three twenty. How long did it take you to rent it? I had a tenant before it settled. So there you go, right? She had a tenant before it settled. Um, Three twenty is positive about a hundred bucks a week after all expenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you revalue it? Uh, three. No, no it, it wasn't two. actually not two seventy. Sorry, yeah. Two seventy. So, and how long did it take you to revalue and pull the equity? Oh, so it was on fire. It was like two weeks. Two weeks. I two weeks. Contract. Two weeks, we uh, pulled out the equity from the property, bought it for two fifteen. This time, the property we didn't have another client on it. You just no, I just said here you go. I just I threw was... it straight okay. to Joe, yeah. and she got the equity out. <laughs> so instantly, sixty k ready to go for a next one. And then you went away for five weeks overseas to your homeland. Yeah, and you had me sign a contract the day before I was leaving. She was flying out. What did you buy? A two bedroom unit in Sydney. Two bedroom unit in Sydney. How much? 315. 315 grand. I'm going to tell where the location of it, not exactly the specific address, is in Parramatta. 315 grand mm. for two bedroom unit in Parramatta, right? Is people revalued. It's already revalued. Yeah. How I want to tell you because you'll be like, oh, let's go spend it. Let's I've, go spend it. What did you get? What did you get it? At 398. 398. I said to you, Gemma, just buy the fucking thing. Did I not say that to you? Yes. Just buy the fucking thing, right? That's really good to hear. Let's go get you your fifth property. And the whole thing happened. <laughs> and it hasn't settled yet. It settles yeah, I tomorrow. Know that, I know, I know. It hasn't settled. We've revalued it. I have strict instructions from my broker. Yeah. Not to sign. I've been asking, can I sign a contract? I'm not okay. allowed. I'm going to put a little note here, Gemma. I'll get you another one. So you got 80K. Uh, so you might, you might get two more. You get the six. Right, six, and it's in a year, right? You're literally preaching, you're doing what you're preaching to our investors. Yeah, here we go. I haven't even caught up with Gemma since she got back from overseas. No, this is really the first time I've hung out. Sorry, Gemma. 
Or do you think it's not? Don't worry, come back. You get two more properties. That's all right. Um, cool. Um, is there any comments? I, I feel like we could be on here all night because I've got heaps of questions to answer from people, and I'm sure they're asking questions through. Well, I am is, quite interesting, I must say. <laughs> do you have anything that you wish to say? Any feelings, thoughts, journey, comments to investors, anything like that? Um, there's lots you could say, of course, but um, I I do like that you did throw me into the properties that the investors said no to. Yeah. Um, because I know I've been asked a few times that people say to me, "Oh, well, how if you're buying, how do I know you're not going to get the best ones? We get all the shit ones." I'm like, "Trust me, pal. I'm getting the ones that you don't want." <laughs> like that's literally how it all started. Literally. Um, literally. Yeah. And just from the whole being really skeptical and things like that, um, and being shit feared, like yeah. it was terrifying. And even now, when I get a contract, I'm like, "Oh, Jesus, here we go again." Um, but that last one. I'm glad it happened whilst I was overseas as well. Yeah. Like I, it literally almost fell through. You were scared. But yeah, because I, with time zones and that, it was yeah. only by sheer coincidence that I'd woken up <laughs> drunk on my mate's sofa, <laughs> went home, and it was only by coincidence that I got a call from Sumit saying that it needs to be signed today. If I just slept yeah. through, it'd all fallen through. Okay. So we have a lot of clients that are overseas. Yeah. I look after a lot of expats. Yeah. So it's like now I can see how difficult it is to actually find a printer no one has a printer anymore yeah yeah so yeah no i think it's it's scary and yeah you look you're paying out money all the time and you always feel broke do you know how you said to be like you're like you have no cash yeah like you're always broke i'm like that's well, not a really good message to send out <laughs> but i get it because i get money and i'm like well, i need to start spending you don't it. want it like, no. who the fuck wants money like it's losing its value i used to hoard money yeah hoard it to the point where but i never had any yeah and now that it's coming in it's cash flow you it's see going, going, yeah going it's actually out. literally flowing out and i get nervous when i've got cash in the bank you've got like a million bucks worth of assets now you're literally a millionaire nearly, nearly a millionaire worth of assets <clears throat> look at that yeah gone from shit broke was your feedback before stone broke stone broke to having nearly a million bucks of assets yeah. in, in a year yeah there we go Anyway, I'm sure you've got questions coming through. Keep them coming through. I'll get to your questions there a little bit later. Uh, I've got lots of questions from you guys in the community. I'm going to answer some of them, and then Gemma, jump in and answer some of these questions as well if you feel like that you've got a different If you've got for on. air, maybe. Okay. Well, I'll try. I never wear... I never... You've got a bottle with a label. I make it this thing where I never oh, put I'm a sorry, label and rip branding. the label off. I'm sorry, I just I'm branding. I like it, eh? Yeah, it's just like... I always rip it off. It's just like... We're not free advertising for Pepsi. No, no, no. So, people think I've got, like, vodka in mine. But you can use this thing here. Can, so, oh, I've got you claws. Can, oh, you've got claws. Okay. So, Jessica, have you ever bought a property with no money down? What is the best property you have? So, some of these questions, like, Gemma is learning every day. I learn yes. every day. Like... I actually just did something really cool last week, which I'm not going to go into at the moment, but um, it basically means I can get to my goal of 100 motels in the five years, like very quickly and expedite things. And I went, wow, like I learned a few things last week. But I'm always learning. Gemma's always learning. And it's important to continue to learn and grow. And um, yeah, Gemma said before, and she saw the top question. There's lots of questions here. I haven't even looked at them myself. Uh, Carolyn put these together for us. But what do you mean? You said, what do you mean by no money down? Like Yeah, the top, it said literally like, no how money. do you buy without yeah. cash? So it was very, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you could do a few different things. You could do vendor finance. You could do, some people try and do dodgy stuff like um, they try and, um, you know, push contracts up. It's actually fraud. So you can't push a contract price up and, you know, do a cash back because it's literally fraud. So you never want to do that. But there is some ways that you can do it, like vendor finance and stuff like that. Um, yes, I have done deals like that. Occasionally, um, you know, I come across them for our investors. Um, I do many different types of deals on a day-to-day -day basis. Like sometimes I'll, I've done things called convertible leases, right? Which is, we're not even going into that today, but I've done convertible leases. I've done vendor finance. What um, do you mean by a vendor finance? You say it, and I, to this day, I don't know what it is really. Um, like the nitty gritty of it. I'll just use an example on, um, uh, for example, right? I'll just use an example. I'll just use an example. I'll just keep it to an You've example. You've said that now. seven times now. Use the example. <laughs> yeah. No, I won't use the example I was going to use because it's you know probably a bit too revealing. But um, let's say a property is $200,000 and you've, 
your shit broke and you got no money, right? And you might say, well, I'll pay you 150,000 now and I'll pay you 50 grand over the next two years. Uh, I don't know, 500 bucks a week. The owner might be like, shit, I'll do the deal. So you can get in the deal, you get the loan from the bank, but then the deposit you're paying off over the next two years. What benefit is that to the vendor? Well, especially in a market like today, you'd be like, well, I'll pay Just you your price, my terms. Yeah. Right? You might find someone that's like scared. Right? I love the news. I love when the news comes in and it's all negative stuff like, oh, fucking interest rates going up again and whatever. It's like, great, someone's going to be shitting bricks and it's my job to go and find that person that's shitting bricks and go, give me your property and I'll give you my terms and I'll get whatever terms I want. So I just ask. So, yeah, yeah it is. Like, there's lots of layers of, you know, you can do that, but if you were to, like, the strategy that you're using, Gemma, with your, you've just got deposit, you've bought a property in Perth, you pulled out the equity, you went and bought in Sydney, you pulled out your equity, now you're going to buy another couple of properties, which we'll sort out in the next couple of days for you, right? You knew I should <laughs> It's <laughs> live, too. <laughs> um, if you were to do vendor finance, you'd probably have a second mortgage or a caveat. You wouldn't be able to pull your equity. So what you're doing is a better strategy than that. Mm. So you've got a strategy that works for you. Some people that might work for, but it just... I wouldn't, I don't think I'd like, unless it's like my only option, but I wouldn't like the tie to the vendor. Do you know what I mean? Unless it's like a mutual benefit, yeah. benefit but once we're getting it's a done, yeah. I don't really want to still, yeah. yeah, but... I've done it. I'm cool with it. Just turn them into your bank. You turn anyone into your bank, right? So people can't use a bank. Go turn someone else into your bank. Making me back. It's great. Uh, next question here is uh, if I have 100 grand in equity and 50 grand in savings, what would you do with it? Well, spend it all. <laughs> spend it all. Spend it all. <laughs> Gemma, it's that one for you. Just remembering this is no financial advice. We're not financial advisors. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I'm spend so it scared all. of saying the wrong thing. <laughs> no, it's okay. okay I'll spend great. it all too because who wants to have fucking cash, right? You have money in the bank, yeah. you can buy less stuff next year. So, um, 150k. If we look at Gemma, for example, who's going to always talk in riddles and rhymes, right? And people right, can take okay. really a lot from that. So we can't give you financial advice, but let's assume that Gemma had 150k, right? Yeah. Well, you just built a property portfolio of four, turning into six in the next month or yeah. two, from fuck all, right? Yeah. If you had 150, you could just go and buy three, three properties straight, straight away, away yeah. and settle them. If you bought three of that property you just bought. You could have pulled out three times of equity. You just bought one property and then you got two more deposits of 80 grand. Go buy two more. Mm -hmm. But if you bought three of that, so you'd have three, mm -hmm. and then you pull out the equity, two new properties. When you try it, there's another six properties. Mm -hmm. You just turn the three properties into nine properties. Mm -hmm. And then that's not even fucking talk about what you could do after that. So if it was me with 150K, I'd try and buy three properties, would be my view. And then try and turn that three into another three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rinse and repeat be my view so maybe leave a little buffer i have a buffer just a little buffer because you don't know so you're not shit broke yeah. stone broke stone broke i don't know all these pommy terms so yeah you teach me something the mother the tongue you should learn something i do okay well you are from england so english is like you know the you mother would tongue from there so mm. yeah uh someone asked what what's the next suburb in sydney yet to be released um isn't that what everyone wants to know? Why they pay us? No, but it's saying like, what's the next new suburb in Sydney? Like, it could be. Do you mean? Um, I think this is off Instagram actually, but I think that that's like, where's the new sub subdivisions being built? And you just go to those Greenfoot areas and look at like, you know, we're here and we've got Box Hill, we've got Oakville, mm. Vineyard, Riverston, those areas. We've got um, down south, like Denham Court. I was driving. I drove to the Southern Highlands the other day and I bought some furniture. Right. It's like yeah. English town, that one. Yeah, Southern mm. Highlands. It's um, Bowral and those sort of places. You should go for a drive. Yeah, I love I've it. Been... It looks like England. Oh, does it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. And um, yeah, as I was driving down there, I saw this place called Menangle. And I was like, shit, they're building all these houses along the freeway. And I was like, wow, they're building. So there's always new areas in Sydney. goes further out and further out. But, you know, is there money in there to be had? I can't spend a million dollars or one and a half million dollars for a house with no ease attached to it so yeah i'd rather there's only a few areas in sydney which i would be buying which are those areas like what you bought the other day i was going to say do you think there'll be a time where we can't buy in sydney uh, uh, damn straight there will be yeah. and sydney has not been on top of my priority for the last two years because you know just the prices are too high and there's a lack of stock and the only areas that i do like are the areas like where we got we mm. in those little units. Um, that's the only top type of market. Sometimes people think Nathan just buys units, 
but I buy houses and townhouses and all different types of a block of units. Duplexes. Duplexes. <laughs> um, but or acreage or farms or whatever. But I just don't see value in anything apart from those type of units mm-hmm. in Sydney at the moment. So yeah. Robbie asked, uh, what is a good yield that you've worked to work from to build your own portfolio? Depends. Do you want to buy in Sydney, like that one you bought in Sydney, you bought it for three fifteen. Mm. It settles tomorrow. You've revaded already for three ninety eight or whatever. And it's, it's pretty positive. Not positive. It looks after itself as well. It's, Usually you have to compromise, you know, yeah. for Sydney. But there's still not the greatest return. It's like a six percent return or something in Sydney. But mm. you could find like a ten percent return. You could find a twenty percent. What's the highest return you've seen yield? Oh God, I was actually thinking this the other day. Yeah. I think it was like a twenty three percent or something. Yeah. No, there was one that was like one of those special deals that was a yeah. bit weird i think it was like 45 percent sort of ridiculous yeah. Yeah. ridiculous but i don't think that's realistic to i had a client i was well so i was speaking to yesterday who wanted to know what the yields were and stuff yeah and i had to say i can send you ones that are 14 15 16 percent we do yeah. get them yeah. but it's not realistic of all of them you know some of you want for equity some of you want for yeah. cash flow and when you buy your properties Gemma, is it what you want as a property or is it what the bank wants oh the bank wants the bank ones. There was a few of them. Well, I said maybe one. Yeah. That yeah. Well, the eighty k one, one. I didn't really oh. want it. Like. <laughs> I I literally, you called me up complaining one day, right? You about called some, me. Up, yeah. You called me up complaining about something. It was in lockdown. I don't know, and I was like, just buy this fucking property. You buy it, Gemma, and I said no, and I sent the contract to you. I, just think I you literally remember buy. protesting, and then half of the protesting realized that I'm not going to win. Yeah, I just said you Fair buy it. Fuck it. <laughs> but but uh, I know that the cash flow on it is yeah. good for what the bank needs. Exactly. And it's going to help you service for more. Yeah. So I've got another question here from, um, it's just a at handle. It must be from Insta. Should I buy now or wait for the recession to get a bargain? That's a very dangerous one, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer my side and Gemma um, might step in and answer something that she would have seen um, because we talked about something similar to this earlier today. But basically, you can wait for a recession, right? How long is the recession going to take to get here? How long is it going to last for? And how low are the properties going to become, right? Mm. Your property we bought in Parramatta is cheaper than what they were selling for seven years ago in Sydney, right? So literally, Gemma's bought a property in Sydney cheaper before interest rates went up, cheaper than what it was seven years ago. And people might be saying, how is that possible? Well, it is. Your Perth property is cheaper than what it sold for. It sold for 300, you bought it for 200, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So these properties are still 100 grand cheaper or 30% or 20% cheaper than what they were seven years ago. You could be waiting for a recession, but the market, because at one and a half mil price range, which is where people want to try and get to of a property, they can't afford to buy that anymore. So those properties might get impacted, but people's servicing now is much tighter. So if we go into recession, interest rates go up, whatever, you might be able to service two months ago, or you might be able to service now, but in three months time, you can't get a loan. So mm-hmm. you're waiting to get a cheaper property, but now you can't afford it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So because servicing is getting impacted, all the little cheap shit rats and mice that people laugh at, those things go up. And I've always talked about building a recession-proof property portfolio. So the properties that we buy don't get affected like now. You're it's already buying at control. the bottom. You're buying at the bottom. It can't really go any further down. And I always kind of thought of if it does go down. So if my 80k middle <laughs> one goes any further down, then yeah. we're all fucked. Everyone's fucked. If that's getting cheaper than, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, but my take on that was someone actually told told me about, um, it seems quite irrelevant, but stay with me. Yeah. Um, they were getting married and then a bit of a wobble. Yeah. And their dad had said, this is the best you're going to get out of him. Yeah. Is that enough? And okay. that was like on the surface, you know, I was like, oh, that's actually a good comment. But it's quite deep, I think. I've always kept that because we can wait for like the property market or your fiance yeah. to get better. <laughs> but yeah. Do what you can on the day. And if this is good enough for you today, if this is what you can do today, yeah. then you go with that. You can't marry someone on the yeah. hopes and dreams that it's going to make them a better person. Yeah. In the same way, you can't buy a property in the hopes and dreams that... It's going to get better. Yeah, or not, sorry, not buy a property, that it might get better. 
when you first started, right? Like, why did you come to work at Be Invested? Honestly. Honestly? Yeah. Oh, I was told not to say this, honestly. Why? Well, I lost my, co- my job during COVID. Exactly, right? <laughs> you lost your job. I didn't have any other options. There you go, right? <laughs> so you lost your fucking job, right? Yeah. Corona hit, you had no job, right? You needed a job. Yeah. You found a job, you came here, right? Yeah. That's where you came here. When you came here, did it seem pretty gloomy? Like fucking everyone's getting locked in the house, they're going to get killed from a virus, whatever's going to happen, right? I don't know because we... Well, look, I remember driving here. It, yeah. it seemed to get worse like 12 months after that. It did. But the other thing is, it's like, how many people at the time, what was the news saying when you started working here? Oh, okay. I know what you're asking me now. House prices fall by 40%. Everyone I spoke to was like scared <laughs> and no offense if any of you are watching, miserable. But I don't blame them either because the news was like, I actually don't watch the news. And when it's been on in the background in my own house, for example. Yeah. I actually start like getting twitched, like, turn that shit off. Like, yeah. it's, I can actually feel the energy being pulled getting, down. Yeah. So when you're talking to people, they're like, I want, I, they've got all these hopes and dreams. What I remember being here during that time is that yous were very positive and hopes and dreams. I was excited. When everybody else was like, your hopes and dreams aren't worth a shit. Yeah. Like, just give up on them. How many people would have locked themselves in the house and done fuck all with their life for the last two years waiting for the prices to crash oh, two years ago, sorry. right? So you just missed the biggest boom in your life, right? Yeah, I but, said that to you the other day. Yeah. The we'll back then was actually a better time. Exactly. To but buy. it was all scary for you, right? Yeah. It was more fearful. So if you look back in 12 months' time, if you need to build a portfolio of 10 properties, 20 properties to retire, how long is it going to take you to do that, right? If interest rates have gone up, your servicing's diminishing, so the ability of what you can buy is diminishing, all of that. Let's say they drop interest rates, then everything's going to take off again. So mm. wouldn't you rather be getting shit on sale? That's how I'd say it. I've never really heard someone say, oh, I wish I'd waited. No one ever calls us up and says, oh, I, I wish... too early or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Oh, I was too young to have bought. Like, even if even if you bought young and had to sell them because you fucked it, at yeah. least you did it and you've made that mistake or whatever. Yeah. Like, there's not many people that say, oh, I got into the property market. I started investing too soon. Yeah. Like, people are always like, people I should have done it call, earlier. People don't call me up and say, Nathan, I'm so happy I sold a house 10 years ago. Right? You've never mm. heard anyone say, I'm so happy I sold a house. They're like, I wish I bought more. I wish I didn't sell. Mm-hmm. I fucked up. Whatever. But you don't have people calling us up saying, hey, you know, whatever. Yeah, even the ones that did well on a sale yep. are like, but I should have put it into something better, like the income. People say, like, they sold at the right time. Yeah. But there's always that, mm, but I could have put it into another asset. Yeah. yeah. Josh asks, should you renovate when you need to or constantly renovate <gasps> when you spend the a... one? So for me, I just renovate when it's fucked. I want to see that I'm getting a return on investment. So. I don't want to go in and change a kitchen and get no money for it, right? I don't want to go in and um, replace the carpet, right? If I replace the carpet, then the paint looks shit. Then I'm like, well, I'm not really going to get the benefit of that. I'd rather paint it, carpet it, kitchen it, bathroom. I'd rather do the whole lot. And um, I was filming yesterday in the motel in the Blue Mountains and uh, Carolyn asked me some questions and I was like, one, two, three, like what are, you know, renovating on scale, right? If you've got a tiler there or if you've got a tradie there, it's easier to paint the house when there's no carpet and cheaper because you splash mm-hmm. the paint around wherever and you don't have to be so cautious of the carpet. So whilst you've got the carpet out, do the painting, right? Mm-hmm. So I only do it when I know I'm either going to get a return of like 20, 30, 40, 50% return on investment. Uh, or if I'm not doing the full reno, I'm just going to patch it up and patch it up until I feel like doing the whole reno. So mm. it's my view. What's your thoughts? No, I have a question. Okay, so you. with the 80k one, I didn't realise that would be the star of the show. Um <laughs> so like that's under rented from the market. So it's one eighty rental. Yeah. But I'm seeing other people that are in the same area getting like two fifty. Yeah. So I asked the property manager, like, you know, yeah, let's call the elephant in the room. It clearly yeah. needs some work. Yeah. I was like, okay, how much what do you think would need doing? Blah blah yeah. blah. So in that, it's still really positive right now at yeah. 180 yeah it looks shit yeah. and it's, it would definitely be an emotional decision to do it if you were to get like... a if you were to get a reno right i'd want to work out how much let's say you, what what would be the things you'd need to do to your house like, apart I mean, the, from push the fucker over yeah so, well the kitchen is yeah. just like a pop-up okay. table okay. 
So I if you can get a, a handyman to go out there, right? Yeah. What I would do. So you need a paint, carpet, kitchen, that sort of thing, right? Yeah. Or even just like new lino. Like okay. just spruce it up a bit, you know? So what would you, my first question would be like, what am I going to get from spending the money? If I'm going to spend 10 grand and I get nothing out of it. I then... want to show people that I own it. Hey? <laughs> I might actually want to show, show people, people that I own it. it. Like be a bit proud so of it, you know? If you could get 250 for it, right? That'd yeah. be 70 bucks a week. 70 bucks a week is three, uh, three and a half grand a year. Mm -hmm. If you could spend 10 grand, right? If you could spend 10 grand yeah. and get 3,500 a year, 3,500 over 10 grand is 35% return. What can you invest 10 grand in and get the 35% return? If that property goes up by 50 grand for spending 10, you've got a five times return on your investment. Mm -hmm. Plus you've got a cash flow of 30, of three, 500 a year. So the question is, like, if you were to do that, there's a flat pack kitchen and inflation is hitting these things, right? Look at staple things and they go up. It used to be $729, went to $749. Last time I bought one was $799, but now they're $829. You can literally buy a kitchen from Bunnings. It's the biggest piece of shit. I love these for regional towns because it's like a cheeseburger, right? The cheeseburger is a chunk of shit, but you know that it's going to hit the spot and you know you're not going to get food poisoning. You could get sick from it. You could be giving, pumping yourself full of bad shit. But you know that it's you're not going to go to some little dodgy shop, takeaway shop, and get sick from it on mm. Monday, right? So the thing is, is that if you're out in this this area is in a regional area at eighty thousand, you could you know that Bunnings stock this shit, right? So if you ordered Bunnings to drop a kitchen around, you could just get a handyman for one hundred and fifty bucks, uh, two hundred, let's say two hundred fifty bucks for a day, three hundred bucks a day, four hundred bucks, a day, let's say five hundred bucks. You could literally pay a handyman 500 bucks for the day and say, put this Ikea cupboard together, basically, because that's all a kitchen is, rip out that piece of shit shelf and screw that cupboard to the mm -hmm. wall instead. So it's like 829 bucks plus 500 bucks. It's like 1300 bucks. Let's say you spend three grand on it, mm -hmm. right? There's your kitchen done. You get them to tile it. So I can spend two days there, not just one day. Um, there's a kitchen for three grand, right? And then you look at the painting and you say, why are you there, Mr. Handyman? I'll spend another three grand on painting the place. So you get six grand. And then you spend three grand on carpet. So you get nine grand. So you've got carpet, paint, kitchen. Mm -hmm. Throw a grand on the blinds and curtains and <laughs> shit. I actually have a pub just around the corner from your place. And with the pub, I actually go on eBay and I ship them because um, I find the free shipping mm -hmm. on eBay and I ship them um, curtains. Right, they need curtains. So I was like, there's nowhere in that area that you get ripped off if you're going to spend like 300 bucks for curtains or whatever. I give them like 50 bucks to ship that and they get shipped there and he pulls them out of the packet, puts them on. That's it. So you could spend a thousand bucks a curtain. There's 10 grand. If you get an extra 70 bucks a week for that, that's a 35% return on investment in perpetuity. People are looking for fucking Bitcoin and wanting their Bitcoin to go up from 100 grand to 500 grand, you're literally spending 10 grand. And if it adds 50 grand value, well, then you've got equity you can pull mm. out and buy another one. There's another deposit you could create. You need to look at the cost. If you're spending 30 grand, you're getting $100 or uh, 50, 50 bucks a week. It's like, fuck, it's a 10%, 5% return. It's shit. Mm. Um, and that's a deposit for another property. Yep. So you need to weigh, weigh that up commercially. So, good question. Josh asks, what is your go-to color choice for painting a property? Oh. So this is a good one, right? Because I just paint everything the same color. I use the same tiles, the same floor. So when you start going to a Birch Hotel, you will see that the same flooring and all that sort of shit is in the same place, right? It doesn't matter if you're in a, a fine establishment or, a, you know, we can put all the fixtures and fittings that make it look a four and a half star instead of a three star. But the paint color, I used to use Whisper White and I used that for about... 12 years or so um, and about three or four years ago um, I changed it from Whisper White to Lexicon Half right so this office is Lexicon it's a half tint of Lexicon if you what's go to like normal people what's what's Lexicon well it's just the name of it you go to the Bunnings and you see all the paint there's like fucking hundreds so of is cards that gray? no it's white with a dash of black in it so it's a white with a dash of black in it. So you mean grey? No, it's like white, but you have like ten liters of white, and you put like two drops of black in, right? So when you paint a ceiling on a house, you have this thing called ceiling white, which is a quarter Lexicon quarter, right? So it's just a bit brighter. 
So the reason why I changed from Whisper White is because you change with the times. Whisper White was great because you have a cornice, which is the corner trimming mm. around the house. I don't know what you call that in England, but you know, yeah. Oh it's no, the, it's cornice. cornice is yeah. right. Okay. Lexicon's not a colour, so. Well, it's just a it's a jewel lights <laughs> colour, right? <laughs> um, but you have the, the the corners, and then when you paint Whisper White, it actually it gives a shadow line, so you, it looks like a different colour from the ceiling to the wall. So. I saved painting different colours and trimming, so I get my painting bill down because I use the same colour on the ceiling. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. But what I realised is that now it, it looks more like a yellowish tinge, so it's got a yellow base, like a creamy base to it. Lexicon half has like a greyish tinge to it, like base tone to it, so it's very bright white, right? And I like it being bright white. So you might look at a house and you go, fuck, there's really hospital feeling. But then you decorate it by putting some trees and plants in the place. You put the carpets that are different mm. colour. So I use dark carpets, like generally like a grey colour. Um, in my motels, I put floorboard tiles throughout the whole place. Just tiles, floorboard, because I can get... So the problem is when you go to different locations is getting access to trades for the different types of things, like the carpet and supplies. But I can go to certain outlets and get... The tiles ship there, and I just get my tile and just go wherever. So whilst they're doing bathrooms, like literally in a motel, I'm renovating bathrooms for three grand, rip out and put in, brand new, right? But that's the labour, then the parts. I might replace all the bathrooms for like, I don't know, seven, eight grand a bathroom, right? They look funky. So shit bathroom you are. But while the tile is there, if he's charging forty dollars a square meter to lay the room, the room might be twenty square meters. Twenty square meters at forty bucks is eight hundred dollars for him to lay all the tiles in the room. And it cost me maybe thirty, forty bucks for the tiles. So it's like thirteen hundred dollars to replace all the tiling. But the tile is there. I want to do the tiling while the tile yeah. is doing the bathroom. That's so you shit. stack your trades. But the colour I use is Lexicon Half. That's that's my colour for today. And the reason why I use the same colour everywhere is that I know that if I need to send someone to a property, you just go fucking Lexicon half. That's it. I've just got grey. Huh? Just grey. Lexicon half. That's what I use. So use whatever you want, but that's my colour. A lot of thought going in behind like thinking about the colour because you need it to, if you're painting the ceiling and the walls the same colour, it needs to... Yeah. Yeah. I don't like those ones that are like bright white and it's like gives you a headache. Well, this is a bit like in the office because yeah, yeah, I've been in the well, office. Well, you need all day. us to stay awake, so I don't yeah. mind that. But yeah, not when you try to relax at home. Yeah. Um, do you think it's better to have your property on principal interest or interest only? There's one of our financial planning, not your financial advisor disclaimers. Uh, for me, I've always <laughs> got interest only, and then after five years or so, then it turns to principal and interest. You've got no choice, have you? Like, there's a certain point where you a bank will be like, you, you've got to. Yeah. You've got to, but. If you've got 10 properties and you're paying 50 bucks a week off, that's 500 bucks a week, that's $26,000 a year that you're paying off your mortgage, you could be putting that 26,000 towards your next deposit. Mm -hmm. You pay that extra money off, it affects your weekly cash flow. If you want to pay more money, you can, but you're not in the contract to do it. But most people want to go pull their equity, so why are you paying down your mortgage if you then you're going to go, go and top it up anyway? Here's all my money, I'll give it to you, bank. Oh, please, please, give me some money back in equity. I'll do what you like, tell me. don't the bank ask you to a certain point, like, why do you need all this? They start asking questions, why do you need all this yeah, money back? cash out policies Try and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So, Question on and capital. That. Um, when you have to go p and and, like, every single bank is making you go p and for whatever reason, I'm not going to pretend to understand that side, Um, is that when maybe you would, some people that are wanting to consolidate debt, would that yeah. be when you start selling off to pay out other debts? Oh, in the future, but I'd, I'd prefer not to sell them. If you've got a hundred bucks yeah. deposited coming from twenty properties, let's get you twenty properties, Gemma. I reckon we get you twenty Jesus, properties. Can you just relax spending my money. We'll get you to twenty properties. You just the spent ten k on a reno that I didn't say you I wanted to do. You spend it if yeah. you want to, but I reckon let's say we get you to twenty properties. It. Twenty properties, a hundred bucks positive cash flow each. That's two grand a week. A hundred grand a year. I'll take you to dinner if you get me to twenty properties. We'll get you there, right? So you're going to get me to dinner, <laughs> but. With it, um, why would you want to sell that cash flow? Because then you'd lose that, that money. No, that what can... I'm thinking of is people that would want, say, 100K passive income. Yeah. And we would say, look, maybe do 20 properties, yeah. wait for them to double, sell off. Because some people might just want to stop investing. People yeah, might that's get fine. Tired. Stop buying them. Once yeah. you sell the property, you lose uh, the future capital growth in perpetuity. Once you sell the property, you lose the cash flow mm -hmm. in perpetuity. Um, so. But isn't there also some properties that... They've got a purpose, which is to oh, sell a, them at a 
at a point. Yeah. Yeah, I'm selling a property at the moment mm. and I don't like selling properties, but I thought, fuck it, it's made a million bucks for me. Yeah. It was a little shitter. I bought it. It's gone up. I'll sell it. Yeah. I'll take a million bucks. I'll go buy something else, which, you know, we spoke about my house that I bought, which we're not going into, but, you know, it's uh, there's just a deposit. There's a small deposit for it, right? <laughs> um, but, yeah, with it... Um, for me, I don't like selling properties, right? For every one I'll sell, I'll go buy another 20. Yeah. So, but it comes down to what someone's comfort is. And I'd rather just keep it and keep pushing the cash flow. Like, mm. it's very poor minded thinking that oh, I'll sell a property because no one ever calls it up and says they're happy from selling a property. You tell me who that you know that you've ever conversed with on the phone in the last two and a half years. It's like, I'm so happy I sold my property to like whatever. Yeah. No, I, one. no, no. Hindsight's wonderful thing. Yeah. Someone asked you. Exactly. That's the part where people miss out. I've got a question here from someone off Instagram. Uh, Bushka is the name, is the handle. What are you looking at for potential? Where are you looking at for potential investment property? That's a very good question. You're wanting to know where my 20 years worth of experience is <laughs> and what our business is all about. I think that's important to give Gemma a call. Yeah, that's you can just about to say. Contact the office from the details in the description 1300 367 925. That's what we specialize in. I don't hotspot areas. I don't try and guess and hope and pray that they're going to go up. I look for, um, you know, quality in the investment and I want to hold that asset throughout markets. Mm. Uh, next question is, can you help us look for a principal place of residence or do you only look for investments? Uh, it's a good question. So for some I of you guys... Huh? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so a lot of people don't even know that we have a buyer's agency out there. Right? What? A lot of people don't realise that. They just think, oh, this Nathan bloke with Ratsdale, he's a funny guy on the internet. He talks about all this other stuff. They might have just tuned in for the first time today. So they don't know. A lot of people don't realise that we actually, I founded one of the first buyers agencies in this country. We've been doing this for like 13, 14 years. And uh, when I started being invested, people were like, what the fuck? You want me to pay you to buy a property? And then all these idiots came out. And they're like, oh, you know, I'm the next guru of, you know, there's courses that tell you how to, you know, everyone's trying to, you know, I have these stories where ex staff say, I've got 20 properties and I just miraculously got here from working in McDonald's. And I'm like, you're a liar. You used to work for me, right? At least, we, talk, at least yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I've got idiots that are lying and try and copy, like, oh, I came from Mount Druid or whatever. I never lived in Mount Druid, but people think that, right? But they write all these things and good luck to them. But in a time 13 years ago, there was no such thing as a buyer's agent, right? There was like maybe five, three, four, mm -hmm. five. And, um, I didn't even want to do a buyer's agent, but it just came from a need and people asked me to do it and then it got popular and other people started talking about it. It got so, popular, it's a bit of an understatement, isn't it? Yeah, and everyone's <laughs> like, oh, what do you charge for a buyer's agent? Good staff in the, it's in good. The no, but like it became popular. People, yeah. you know, what I mean by popular is that everybody's a buyer's agent now. So, um, but 10, 12, 13, 15 years ago, there was no such thing. And that's something that's very new in this country is a buyer's agent. So, and you know, even doing this, yeah. There is nothing in me yeah. that would think that I am able to go and do it without your assistance, which I'm is, quite, I, I don't know what that means. I'm humbled you know, by but... that. Uh, I see these people that have still got the same story that they had 10 years ago. They look 10 years older, but they're still, you know, they share staring at the story. I've got 10 properties or whatever. And it's like, you're being a buyer's agent, but you don't know what you're selling. All you know is what we helped you do with that. And there's nothing wrong with it, but... I just know that there's a lot of liars out there, which you come across on a daily basis. But um, we help people locate and negotiate deals. Um, and I want to buy and below market value to make sure that when you're paying us a fee that you're getting dividends on the investment that you're investing with us. So yeah, I can help you on a principal place. I can help you on a investment. I do specialize in investments, but I do help people sometimes with principal place. If I can't, I'll send you to another buyer's agent. There's actually, there's a few mm. people out there that we know, we like and we trust and we work alongside them. Um, there's nothing, I didn't even ask for referral fees. I just go, hey, you go to this guy or you know, just go to this chick. But I know that there's a lot of dodgy people out there in the, in the space. I think now. by that point as well, when the people are asking us to, I always like when they're asking us to look for their principal place because yeah. there's so much emotion in that, Yeah. in a principal place. And we're strictly no emotion. No emotion. Them, but 
the to me the client's telling us okay i want your help to find my yeah happiness yeah it's a bit romantic exactly. that, isn't it? but like yeah emotions i don't like without... i don't like emotions right like no. someone will go oh, i want the bedroom over here it's like shit you're buying the thing 100 grand below market right like, you, make 100K, you know Don't. what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> so different philosophies but we can help you if it, if the two worlds meet then you know happy days a lot of the properties that we buy could be principal places of residences but yeah gonna pump through these questions there's so many of them yeah, you guys keep asking them through um uh advice on purchasing mortgage resale houses it is the first home buyer should look into is it good or bad what are your thoughts i love bank repos going back 10 years ago there was a lot of bank repos when interest rates were very high people pretty much can't go bankrupt now with their mortgage because they say oh you can go on a mortgage holiday oh i've had corona it's all right we'll put your mortgage on hold for six months so to go bank repo today is very very difficult so my um, first one was wasn't it maybe i can't remember I buy so many. I know the price. I know what it is. I can't remember I the. It was. was okay. Cool. Nothing wrong with this. Just like buy another one. Uh, Stephen says, "Does Birchy think the units of Sydney will start to get some growth once the migration starts again? 100%. All those close cap between the growth of houses have had, and where the units. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Do you want me to take out these two? Yeah. Close the gap between the growth houses. The growth that houses have had yes. and the units have struggled comparison. It's the first time I read it. I'm just reading through it and mumbling it to myself. Yes, uh, units are the things that are going up today. Right? Uh, Recession-proof property portfolio, units are the things that are going up, the houses are the things that are falling. Funny thing out there. Right? All those big you know, houses yeah. that are out there. Big. And that swaps? Did that swap? Yeah. yeah. Property is not linear. So Gold Coast was doing shit all for 10 years and now it's the hottest thing in the country mm. everyone's like should i buy in the gold coast so i was the only idiot out there buying in the gold coast when the market was so crap but i'm not going to get caught up in a hot market so you know i want to go i don't think people realize that that we go into a market we we have it there and then we jump out before everybody else gets there we've Pretty already much. been there we're a contrarian investor yeah yeah um we got here. Do you still think property is the best hedge against inflation? There are many things to hedge against inflation. The worst thing is cash because you're losing your purchasing power con constantly. Um, but uh, I, my biggest favourite asset class is uh, buying real estate with cash flow attached to it. Uh, that's below rebuild cost. Um, it's actually you heard me over talking about something that I haven't had loans for years, right? And I've actually talked about getting some big loan facilities because i'm more active in the market today than i have been for a very long time right and like people are scared it's good love it yeah um rob asked how should smart city developments affect our decision when purchasing investment property stay away and go regional uh, i'm not a fan of smart cities yeah it's an agenda 2030 type instrument uh, there'll be a lot more cameras so if you look at every town there's these big white cameras that are being installed in the towns um, all around your local city, there's big white cameras being installed on every traffic lights. Uh, mm -hmm. There's also defibrillators being installed, but we won't go there. Oh, in I have seen in them parts, actually. In yeah. houses, in drive throughs at McDonald's, yeah. they are everywhere. In the Woolworths, the Coles, they literally, you walk down the street in the park, someone that's here that in our office took two photos yesterday walking around Windsor, which is like a regional sort of part of Sydney, like outside yeah. of Sydney. Uh, sent us sent me two photos of defibrillators in a park. It's crazy, but these things are going to be for biometric cameras, social credit system, um, electric charging of cars, stuff like that. It's not somewhere I want to live, right? I don't, I'm not going to participate in that sort of city. I live on land. I, you know, guns sound fun and uh, big trucks sound fun and being like a person that can defend for yourself and have. Um, you know, animals and uh, thousands of acres, like very important things that people should be aiming for. So, you know, being stuck in a little smart city, eh? but I think it's going to be the part of the future. So I'd rather mm. own that. The wealthy have estates, right? They don't have, you know, the little units. That. They don't need to be in the city. They wealthy live out of the city, right? So the real wealth. You don't watch TV, I know. But have you seen the show Haunted? No, I've heard of this. Someone sent me it the other day, one of our clients, sent a preview to this thing called the hunted or something but I'll, yeah but yeah. there used to be it was in there was a show in england that was quite similar and like these fugitives go on the run and like these you know you got all these um the top big wigs in investigation people got to yeah. hunt them down 
But when you actually watch it, that's already here, but covertly. Like yeah. they actually say there's so much technology that exists that you don't know exists. That the we control can stay the... right ahead. And yeah. it's, you know, you watch it for the thrill, they're going to get caught. But. But it's subliminal messaging. 100%. Right? It's yeah. like we've got you before you even you think about it. your next. Exactly. Journey. And people talk about fantasy, oh, those conspiracy theorists, imagine this. And then they go, oh, look, look at the video that occurred. It's, like, uh, right? it's all programming, right? Yeah. That's why it's called television. Tell lie vision. It's the lying to your vision. It's, yeah, it's good. Uh, Luke asks, do you think the property will go up much higher during hyperinflation? How much higher do you reckon? We are not in hyperinflation at the moment. We will be heading into hyperinflation. We've seen le massive levels of inflation. If anything, we may be going through a 12-month stint of slight deflation. Um, they're going to try and stop inflation from going crazy, which will end up causing a recession. To stop the recession, they'll have to print more and it'll send us into hyperinflation. Um, I think that everything we look at uh, will go up much higher. Like a can of Coke is now like five bucks. When I was a kid, it was like 60 cents. Now I feel old because it's like, you know, when I was a young boy, it was, you know, but that's going to happen much greater and greater and greater mm -hmm. levels. People can't afford to eat, can't afford to live and whatnot. So bad. What has Nathan learned from prior hyperinflation and how does he think this one will pan out, timelines, etc.? cetera? Uh, I've never lived through a hyperinflation. Uh, it's all theoretic, theoretic, theoretical, um, but it's based on my research. It's based on other countries, other, other nations and other currencies that have all died via hyperinflation. So that's where I get my knowledge from. Um, Sparkles, I know who Sparkles is. It's one of our investors. Uh, this must be from Instagram. What are your thoughts on Labor's co-ownership scheme of helping property buyers? I think it's great. It's going to create a newer Ponzi scheme and it's going to keep the government even more invested and it's going to create new financial instruments and eventually push people from never being able to own the property um, and have some other sort of uh, you know commercial system underneath. But you know more suckers will come in, uh, more players will play at the table and then that'll push our asset values up. So it all contributes to our end goal as an investor, those that are lucky. Like, you come from England, right? Oh, you're quick, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Very quick. <laughs> oh, I just realised that, no. <laughs> but they call you a landlord, right? And yeah. there's a lot of things about lords and ladies and whatnot, right? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. You, I'm a lord because you guys got me the, Officially, the, yes. the, the, the foot or the metre of land. But it's up there. In it's Scotland, up there. yeah. Scotland. Lord. So, Lord Birchie. Yeah. But with it, um, the land lord is the lord of the land, lord right? Lord. And that is something which people will be, you know, contributing off the land, but they're not owning the land and they're not mm -hmm. owning the asset in the future. And I think that it all stems back to the communist, totalitarian, fascist system. And sometimes people think I'm a bit weird with the things I say, but if you take a bigger look from a different vantage point it's it's mm. pretty scary so i think it's good good for me because i want to be the lord of the land and you know you want to have control and power and that's what owning assets is is owning mm. the ability to do things that you want so yeah elizabeth said uh, is it safe to invest in areas that have flooded should be invested check out checks now include floodplains how long on average does nathan anticipate investor moving from active in well there's lots of questions here um I only buy marginally affected flood. So I reckon that out of maybe 10,000 properties, there might be only like 50 out of the 10,000 that would have ever had any flood, but they're not the types of properties that you would see that would go underwater. It might be that there's a little they're bit up, of, yeah, yeah they're, they're, higher up. they're higher up or they've got water that floods across the land. So it might have just like a skim of water in a real bad event. Uh, I know hands down, touch wood that out of all of the weather manipulation i mean floods that have occurred in recent times that zero zero of our investors have had any problems with a tenant sitting on the roof of the house where the house flooded so no one's had it <clears throat> yeah uh, how long on average does nathan anticipate an investor moving from an active accumulation phase to debt recovering uh, debt reduction strategy if houses range from 180 to 540 roughly 10 properties i ask this because it impacts on how much actual significant income is coming in. Um, we've got people that get 10 in a year, get 10 in six months, get 10 in three years. Um, it depends on your position or what you're trying to do, etc. cetera. Uh, Gemma's got four in a year. She's going to get six in a year in a couple of weeks. 
and we'll get it to 20 in the next sort of 18 months. So keep an eye What? Out. Yeah, we'll get you to 20. Mr. Pitts, that pay me more, Nathan. Um, you're building your own the cash banks are flow asking there. For it. The banks are asking for it. Oh, you know, it's a uh, it's, uh, good try there, Gemma. <laughs> good try. Lucky I know how the banks work. <laughs> we'll get you there. Um, what happens if interest rates rise and we have to start pumping our own capital into loan repayments? Should you sell at that stage? Well, it just depends. You should never push yourself too hard, right? We've worked on an interest rate with 1% higher, 1.5% higher for a very long time, uh, thinking that if interest rates did go up, it's been like that since day one, really. Is we haven't gone down and go, oh, it's only 2.5% interest. We're working on 4 and 5% sort of interest rates. So um, you want to be working with a buffer in place. Um, if interest rates go up, just think about this, right? If you've got properties with rents that are coming in, a, I actually did a video on this last week or the week before. When the interest rates go up, the rents go up, mm -hmm. right? So the higher that the interest rate, it just gets passed on to the tenant. When the interest rates go down, the rents still stay high. So it's, it's actually good that the interest rates go up. It's good for your position and overall. Um, but the people that will be screwed are the people that have got a one and a half million dollar mortgage, two incomes, you've got two kids, two incomes, mm -hmm. you've got a car that's in your driveway that's not yours, these different things like that, that you really pushed yourself too high and then you can't afford to continue that lifestyle and you have to physically earn the money to pay that mortgage. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's where I see the issue. But um, ideally and touch wood that you guys don't fall in that position if you ever get stuck or need help on that reach out that's why Gemma is the investor relations manager so she handles you know questions from you guys and puts you in the right direction Gemma's never here to say this is what you should do one two three we've got hundreds of staff we've got finance people that are experts in finance we've got people that are experts in accounting and experts in managing the properties experts in locating the properties and negotiation so speak to Gemma if you feel like you are stuck in one of those sort of positions. Um, question for Nathan, how do you recommend beginners on their asset allocation and begin when to diversify when building their portfolio? Um, I'm assuming you know your question is about where to buy the properties and stuff. Um, I think it's important to have a strategy uh, when building a property portfolio. What is your game plan and sort of reverse engineer from there. So the properties that you need in your portfolio are purely there to serve a purpose to get you from where you are to where you want to be in the future. What type of location would you recommend a first time buyer to buy in? Watch attributes, the location, crime rate, local school rankings, popularity, walkability. Who gives a shit? I was just about to say, I couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> uh, I couldn't give a fuck. Gemma just bought a property uh, in Sydney, 315 grand, repaid it for 398. Eight. Yep. Yeah. Um, she hasn't even settled on it, settles tomorrow. She's pulling out the equity tomorrow. Um, and that's that's going to enable her to <laughs> uh, see how excited she is to buy properties. Like, oh, no. I know, but I'm being told to wear and I know that's you're right. going to get me in trouble. No, no, I'll speak to them. We'll sort it out. But um, with it, I bought my first properties in Mount Druitt. People used to laugh at me and go, Nathan, why are you buying ship properties in... Uh, Western Sydney, and they're 150, 200 grand. Those things now are, you know, a million bucks. So, you know, as much as all those things matter, it doesn't really matter. You need to have the assets that are bringing cash flow, equity, growth, um, and building out a position. You can get to a point where you're over, you ask questions 100%. I love getting questions to make sure yeah. you understand it, but you can ask too many. Too many to a point where you won't do anything. So there's a the term for it. You can do. Analysis a... paralysis. Yes, that is it. Look at that. Do you know what that was beforehand? Gemma said, does the colour match the. <laughs> I think my dad's watching this. Wow. Keep the questions very PG rated, guys. PG rated. <laughs> <laughs> you I actually think my parents are watching. Sorry, mum. <laughs> um. Anyway, we'll, I'll filter the questions coming through. Keep the questions, right? Um, how do you determine whether a property will still be profitable? What tools or rules do you calculate this? Um, this is funny. <laughs> Gemma's like, yeah, that might be laugh. We're going to get not laughing, laughing about you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, 
How do you determine whether the property will be profitable? What tools do you, Gemma, can't look Hold at? Hold it can't. together. Well, geez, you have to be professional. Uh, yeah, well, you know, we have fun with what we do. Um, you want to make sure that the cash flow stacks up, the property's value is there. You want to make sure that you're buying something below replacement cost, and you want to make sure that you've got room for upside for growth. Um, how you can determine that is by making sure that, you know, when you're buying the property, that you're not buying into an area where necessarily the um i'm still laughing about the last question i can't <laughs> laugh about this. you want to make sure that the property um you know that for example if we look at a local area here and it's 1.5 million dollars to buy and everyone's on 100 grand income 150 grand income there's not much room for that to go up any further but if we're going to somewhere like perth or we're going somewhere like Parramatta, um looking at those properties at 200 grand you could be on 30 grand a year and be able to support that mortgage, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So if someone's on a hundred grand a year, well, then there's more room for that to go up so high. And that's sort of what's happened in those markets like the Gold Coast and Brisbane and those sort of markets over the years for us. So uh, what are some strategies to buy and hold in real estate? What is your personal strategy? Uh, it's just to buy and hold. Mm -hmm. so, well, so yeah, it's you go, you no, go. No, no, no. no, you tell everyone, you tell everyone. <laughs> um, below market value. Cash yeah. flow and equity. Yep. No, and sorry, growth. Growth, equity and cash flow. But then we added the new ones, which is buying it below rebuild cost. Yes. And making sure we're buying in an area where the servicing is so strong it can continue to buy based on like what I just said. So yeah. Um, how do you supercharge your equity growth? Well, you speak to us, give Gemma a buzz and you know, see how we can build you the portfolio. We want to be buying them where they're below market and you know, all those factors uh, play in. But I think it's important because some people still today get a bit confused if they think it grows quickly. I don't think some people realise that we're walking into that equity. Yeah. When we're buying it, we want to make sure we've got the equity, like yeah. those two deals that we spoke out about with Gemma. But yeah. Um, how do you manage your properties interstate? Um, I just get property managers to manage them. Have you had any issues with your properties that you manage in the state? No, actually, some of my property manager in Blink it was actually it was really good yesterday. They gave me the problem, but the solution in the same email. Okay. So, and I was never been so happy for a tenant to get evicted. Okay. Just costed me a fortune. So, okay. But yeah, no. What are some headache solutions, situations you've been in and how did you overcome it? What advice would you give new property buyers looking to grow their portfolio? Um, I have headache issues every day, right? Like shit goes wrong. Um, you know, a lot of people think, oh, Nathan, it must be just so easy. You know, you just have pro properties and they just do their thing. Uh, you have issues, right? And it's just how you address them. It's like finding the solution. You just said you had a problem where the agent told you there's a problem, but there's a solution and yeah. you're probably better off from it. You need to be strategic and you need to give your mind energy. There's, you know, when building a property portfolio, it's like a business and there's always a problem with the business that you need to overcome and improve and, mm. and all that. So constant sort of part of, of growing. But it's important. I don't think as much as we can make it look easy and sound easy what we do, I don't think we can in fairness sit here that it's always going to be easy no it's not like there's a lot of properties that like an agent's being an ass about it or whatever yeah. um but i think by having people or having me on the end of the phone the amount of times people just call me for to yeah. download and they don't even need anything for me to see me to listen to them and like yeah. that's okay yeah vent um because i don't think it's not as easy i don't know how people do it by themselves yeah i honestly don't know how people do it by themselves yeah but, it's um it's actually one of your properties that you had and like you know that it's got value your first one right yeah and let's talk about that because that's the problem that you had recently right or throughout the whole time you bought it like Gemma's here and she deals with our investors every day of the week mm -hmm. right and you bought this property you got into it you paid 160 you know it's worth 250 you could sell any day of the week now there's <gasps> others at two at 300 and 350 so if you were to sell this property today you sell it for 350 right you make two hundred thousand dollars you've gone to the bank three times now and the value is evaluated mm -hmm. at like 170 180k yeah. right you said to me if i didn't work for you nathan i'd think you're a scammer God, you right? have no secrets have you you can't have any yeah. secrets well we're talking about it we're just having a <laughs> chat no yeah absolutely if i didn't and work in here i would 100 percent be like you've shafted me with this one yeah but all the numbers 
are in front of me on real estate. It's not like secret information. It's on real estate. But you still got frustrated. Oh, no, I would say it's all right. Don't worry about it. Buy another one. You get equity out of the next one, and you've yeah. got equity, and you've got equity, and it's yeah. it's it's working. So it's not just linear. Like one day you'll just sit there, and it'll be like, hey, here's equity, and you've got you know two hundred grand equity, and someone will just be able to unlock it, and you yeah. can get it. And you're like, fuck, there's another four. I didn't know where they came from. But I'm actually glad that the, I've had issues with finance and things like that, and the bank has been putting me through the ringer with it, because I I've got. An insight into the, what the clients are thinking and feeling and stressing about. Yeah. You know what I mean, if it was all smooth sailing for me, I'd be like, relate. oh, well, what, what you wanted about? Like, it was really yeah. easy. But because I've had the same issues, yeah, it's easy for me to hear a client and what they're saying. Yeah. Um, oh, look at my fans. You got some fans here. Let's get into these questions, right? We've got Dave here, my two favorite people. I'll be ready to go hard again soon, peeps. Then you got Lindell. Woohoo. Go, Gemma. There we go. We've got Brock. Reach out to Birchie at Be Invested and you'll find no, out. No, Gemma. Huh? You've got to reach out to Gemma. You got... saying to reach out to you. You're not going oh, to Oh, yeah, yeah. No, they, uh, they tagged it. Yeah, yeah. Right. reach out to Gemma. <laughs> Leah, Gemma. Everybody loves you, Gemma. Here we go. Uh, Nathan, whoop, whoop. Gemma, killing it. Uh, lucky Birchie didn't have a rat's tail when you met him. You'd never believe him. No, <laughs> no, no. Um, Rose, Pat, and you two, of course. <laughs> um Gemma is the best. Who said that? Gemma is, must be Pat. Where is it? Uh, Josh oh, said Rose Rose. Renew. Yeah, Rose, yeah. Um, Ryan, my girlfriend has 700 grand of equity in a place. I'm about to buy my first place for 585. I'm buying below market value. If we move in together, her rental would be 600 medium. Uh, house price, she has just put hers. Uh, property is 400 if I rent it. What do you think we should choose? There's lots of questions there, Ryan. I believe that you should... Uh, pick up the phone, one three hundred three six seven nine two five. 367 call the team, have a chat with Gemma, and she'll put you in contact with... Do you remember one of our clients that was meant, was meant came to us because they were going to buy that property for 500 and we got three instead? What's that? He, he was, and I got him, we, he had a map session with Benny, he had 500, he was going to buy it in 500, oh, he was yes, going to yes, buy yes, two yes, on yes, the yes. same street. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we got three instead and now he's on, I think he's doing six now. Six properties. There we go. Instead of one, uh, Rose and Josh here are having a good old chat, and they, <laughs> I'm well, and Gemma's the best, and all that. Uh, Mally says, "Do you have any roles going at being invested? If so, how do I apply? Seriously, though, right? Um, look, we're actually finding it very difficult to employ staff at the moment. Um, I've got probably about fifty roles. There's five, so I have to go five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty." 35, 40, 45, 50, about 50 roles going across the business. Um, and we are finding it difficult to recruit. Um, so if you are interested of applying to work for the business, send us an email. Um, I don't know the exact email address because we've got to have people in culture. Send it to me I'll get it to... Well, I actually think it's best just to go to HR. Like if you just do hr at beinvested.com.au. That doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't it? No, it got changed to people and culture. Flick is a DM, uh, people and culture. Well, yeah. if they do it to the admin one, I can get it to... Admin at beinvested.com.au. Send your email over with your resume and uh, the team will put you in contact. There's, We're looking for a few roles in your team. We're looking for a few admin roles. We've got professional services roles, whether it's in finance or whether it's in accounts or whether it's in property management. We have about... 20 roles in property management going nationally at the moment. I've got endless amounts of roles for tradespeople, for um, for cleaners, for housekeeping staff, for motel staff, front of house. In um, short, yes. Marketing. I need marketing staff. I've got like three marketing roles going at the moment. So, yeah, reach out. Uh, I'm going to be in the same virtue with the paint, mate. Keep the same colours so they're in neutral colours. Don't age and they're all the same at each properties. Um, do recall, Gemma, like when we're sitting here in the camera, it's just your little face in the thing here. Oh, so I'm, in, say... I'm interested in what okay, they cool. have to say. Cool. cool. What they're just because you can't see yourself. Like sometimes it's like, you know, part of your face. You've got so like I don't stare showing. at myself when I'm on the first book. No, yeah, but like... sometimes I fall off the screen, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> Oh, hey, Ricky. Ricky. Had a great call with Gemma. Got a love heart there next to it with some hands going up with a high five. So uh, I remember when I was at the office uh, when you told Gemma you need to buy this property, funny time. So Josh was here when <gasps> yes. I told you to buy a property. Yeah. Um, 
Leah said that you told you she's amazing. Yeah, Leah referred. Okay, Ricky. cool. Um, Ricky, yeah, she's keeping me contact. I am loving this attention. Here we go. Uh, what can you tell me about land tax change, which has recently happened in Queensland? How will that affect you? Um, so there has been a recent land tax change, which means that if you own a property in Queensland and in other states, they're going to try and tax you double. Um, so they're, they're just trying them. to steal money from you, right? But land th that land tax, I think you have to disclose that you have properties. I ain't going to disclose shit. You want to steal money from me? You come and find it, right? <laughs> like, good luck to you. Fucking, you can work for it. But you know, it's self admission. Um, uh, ultimately, they're just trying to double dip their hands in your pockets. Uh, there's been times over the last two decades, um, which there's a guy called Bob Carr. He used to be the Premier of New South Wales. This is long before you were here. You may have been a little kid in you know England, and uh, it was maybe like you know, 20 years ago or something. So um, with him, he introduced a sales tax, so stamp duty for when you sell the property. So you pay stamp duty when buying the property, you pay another stamp duty when selling the property, and then you have to pay your capital gains tax. It was just like a random tax. And he got voted out, right? So um, that lady from Queensland may be voted out. Um, you may be able to have less investors, so then you'd have the opportunity to push your rents up higher. Uh, you just want to pass that cost on to someone else. So I'm not too fussed by it. Like naturally, I'll be very impacted if that was to come to fruition. I don't know if it's been passed yet as well, but naturally, if I'm impacted, I'll just pass the cost on and it's what it is. Advice for taking out equity and what does the best investments in Queensland right now? Um, Pull out the equity, speak to someone. There's uh, Rose and Peter on this chat. They're our brokers here um, and from our team at Zinger Finance. Get in contact with Gemma, which I believe that you already are by looks of things. Um, Gemma can put you in contact with the finance team, which I'm sure she'll already be on to for you. Um, and what are the best investments in Queensland? I don't go and look for hotspot areas and pick up in um, sort of specific areas. I want to go and find properties um, that are below market value. So I'll buy anywhere if the numbers stack up. So that's my view. Uh, Nathan, you need to start your own bank. I will be the bank one day. Don't you worry about that. I will. <laughs> um, uh, where else are we here? Uh, love him, Michael Camilleri. Um, I don't know what it's about. I don't know if you love Michael or you love us here having a chat. <laughs> um, if you have a portfolio of properties opposed to units, apartments, are you in a high risk position heading into a recession? Uh, no, you need to make sure that your cash flow is in check. Um, the more tenants that you have, the more streams of income. If you've got two houses or 10 units, uh, the 10 units, you've got 10 sets of incomes coming through. If one of them falls off, you've still got nine. You've got two houses, you lose one, you've only got one. Uh, is your cash flow enough to be positive? Uh, if interest rates go up, are you going to be negative? Those sort of things you need to factor in, but we can help you. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Gemma's the best event, event too. too. Yep. Go, go, Gemma. Uh, let's buy it all up. Exactly. Uh, hi, Nathan. Will rates go to 6%? 6% how? At the RBA or at the bank? Uh, at the bank, they may, but if they go up, they're going to come down very quickly. Uh, at RBA, definitely not. I think that the top level that they'll tap out is maybe 3%, but I think they'll start coming down much before uh, we get to that level. Uh, Stephen, congrats, Gemma. I'd love to have a chat sometime soon with the Be Invested team about a range of stuff. So have email a chat. Me. Send Gemma an email, uh, admin at beinvested.com.au. Gemma checks that inbox. Um, if you've got some fan mail for her, uh, send her a, a, a message. No weird messages, please, guys. No weird messages. Uh, weird people have been writing things in here. Glad nobody's told you to keep it short tonight. Never get sick of being invested Tuesday night. Thanks, Brock. Uh, always get told to keep it, um, you know, contained. And uh, I've got to, you know, I notice at some points that people start going, shit, I've got to go to bed, got to put the kids to bed, whatever. But, um, you know, I, I get enjoyment out of... Um, you guys here so yeah on that note um we've been on for one and a half hours oh um, it's been fun it's been fun uh we've got here lots of questions that we've covered off on and i think 
we've given lots of value today to people. We've given the community, you know, lots of golden bits for not just like your hair, but you know, that people have been able to <laughs> that's really Stop. fun. Stop. Gold nuggets of information, right? We we've got gold nuggets, right? Just gold nuggets. Gold nuggets of information, right? Um, with it, if you do have questions, uh, do reach out to the team. Uh, Gemma is sort of front of house when you contact Be Invested uh, and start your journey with us. You'd speak to one of our investor relation managers. We've got Wayne, we've got Pat, we've got Charlie, we've got Gemma, we've got Jeremy, uh, we've got Hannah, we've got Amber, uh, we've got Charlie. a big team. Charlie. Oh, I, just, said, sorry. I swear Literally. I said Charlie, but we've got Charlie as well. Yeah. Um, and we're growing. We should have another three or four investor relation managers coming on soon. Uh, hopefully, if you guys uh, you know, are interested, reach out to the team. Um, speak to Gemma. Speak to one of her colleagues. Uh, you started working in this business two and a half years ago. The world was a more messed up place than what it is now. I think it's always been messed up, but like the fear, the propaganda yeah. on specific things. If we look financially... Um, it was a much more scarier time because people were losing their jobs. You lost your job. That's why you came here. Um, you know, if people lose their jobs in a recession, we're growing, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's cool, right? Come to us, right? We, we'll do cool things. Um, but the world now isn't that bad, right? Like, it's important to have a plan. It's important to have a strategy. Um, we build strategies. You know, we can't help everyone. Uh you know, we have a very, uh, we don't just go and buy a property for someone. We're not looking to find the, the specific street with a specific block. If you're after that, go and find it yourself. Um, what we're good at is playing Monopoly. There's a Monopoly board up there, however it, you know, sits. There we go on the screen. Um, we play Monopoly in real life. Uh, we're buying houses, units, motels, shopping centers, all different things that we buy. Um, if you need help on building that strategy, we're here to help. If you need help on financing that strategy, we're here to help. If you need help uh, managing your revenue and pushing those rents up to get the best cash flow to retire, we're here to help. If you're wanting to start off, we're here to help. So yeah, reach out to us. Um, as a side note, you can reach out to us, email admin at beinvested.com.au. Give us a call, 1-300-367-925. And there's one little little spruik of something they want to do this i've been told it's here in bold today uh for the promo there is one week left until the sale is over uh the raw and uncut mentoring program uh which was eight thousand dollars when it came out about four years ago uh it is for sale at three thousand dollars but for this month only there's only one week left it's 299 bucks so if you do want 100 hundred a hundred hours of me with other colleagues of mine uh, sharing ideas, strategies, and different things. Uh, you can get access to that. Um, and you can, uh, if you're one of our uh, clients that we help out yes. from a buyer's agency, if you are one of our clients that have helped you buy a property for and you've been a part of the buyer's agency, you get access to this for free. Mm -hmm. So as a part of our um, buyer's agency service, you get it for free. Uh, email my team at marketing at beinvestor.com.au for your copy. So you just reach out to your investor relation. If Gemma looks after you, reach out to Gemma. If it's Jeremy, Pat, Wayne, whoever, just reach yeah. out to your start to your member, to investor relations person to get access to the mentoring for free. Because some free. already paid and I had to text okay. them to say, Stop, okay. don't pay for it because okay. the real is it's the same, it's the same, same thing. Money. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. if you are okay. a client, don't pay for it. I'll send it through. I'll mark it. I'll send it through. Cool. And in the program, I talk about you know news and stuff that was relevant at the time uh, that would show that we we're heading into a massive recession many years ago, which we averted because they printed all this money. Um, I talked about lots of things that we've seen today, apart from an illness and uh, you know medications and things like that. Um, Predominantly, I talked about how to secure properties uh, at the right time, how to negotiate your own property prices. I covered off on lots of stuff of like that. I covered off on about how to finance your portfolio, how to use a self-managed super fund, tax, all that, um, how to get maximum returns from a real estate sale if you're to sell your property, um, and what strategies to use in a recession. And we're in a recession. Uh, we have not seen it as a recession yet, but we are in a recession. 
and I'm excited, right? Like nothing gives me more um, excitement than fear, right? People use fear on you to control you. People use fear on you to push their agendas, which is what we've seen in the news for the last two years. I see fear as being an opportunity because you can get a lot of things that you wouldn't get if everyone was just so fucking confident. So they mm. need to keep us controlled. They need to keep our mind um, suppressed and that's what they do. And uh, it's an exciting time. So I'm Have by you more noticed more... on that that when you stop being scared, your circle starts to change? Did you find that? Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. When like when you're no longer scared and when you're confident, you no longer fit the world's narrative. 100%. Yeah, I it's, feel like... It was a really weird transition. And I feel like the community that we have, like I've been sharing this stuff and <clears> I had <throat> like people that we helped out for many years are like, you're too crazy. And it's like, well, I might be crazy, but at least I made you lots and lots of money along the way, right? Yeah. I'm not trying to push my narrative on you. I no. try to be jovial about it go do whatever you wish to do it doesn't change my life if you want to buy 20 properties you go and buy 20 properties Gemma. ain't gonna fucking change my life right it's gonna change your life if someone watching this wants to pick up the phone and call Gemma and say maybe we can engage in a conversation and it might change your life if it doesn't you're still gonna buy your 20 properties i'm still gonna do what i'm doing i'll still go and buy all the shit i do and i'm gonna do what i do and nothing really changed in my life so i just have fun with it i don't care about people's opinions they might think i'm an idiot they might not like my rat's tail doesn't bother me. I don't even love the rat's tail. I'm growing it more now just to be a bit of a smart ass. So it's, it's getting there, Gemma. You've been away. You've missed it for a bit. Um, it's coming off soon. I've, I've set up a gym at home at my new house. Gym. Going to lose 20 kilos. Going to get fucking ripped. Will you die at Ginger? When um, I get to 20 properties, will you die at rat's tail Ginger? I probably won't have it by then. But if I do, sure, why not? Okay. Yeah. This is on documentation. Maybe get yourself to 10 and I might have it still. Because I reckon I can get you there pretty quickly. Okay, ten and we if I still have it with a blonde streak. Sure. Yes. I've already got the grey streak here. <laughs> Why was it gonna pop out? I literally got the grey. I put gel in my hair just to hide the grey. Like it's all fucking grey now. They call it salt and pepper, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they call it salt and pepper, but it's looking more salty, right? It's, it's uh, I want more pepper. But um, I was looking at it yesterday, and I was just looking at myself, like in a reflection or something. I was like, "Fuck!" Hang on. It was in a photo. Someone took a photo, and I looked at myself, and I was like. It looks like I've been sanding gyp rock, right? <laughs> I've got fucking grey powder and white powder in my hair. Right? Yeah, but no, it was just my hair. Oh. Yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. So on that note, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Spend an hour and a half of your time with us. Um, yeah, we'll catch up with you soon. Any final notes, Gemma? Oh, I think I've, I've talked quite a lot. I'm not, never short of words. but um... I know you're not. Oh, questions. No, I, I think we've pretty much covered it. Cool. Um, yeah. You don't have to think what we think for the grander scheme of things. We can still build a property portfolio. I think that might sometimes scare people that are new. Yeah. That you need to unlock this whole... You yeah. sp you kind of drip fed it to me. Yeah. It, wa it wasn't like a... Oh, by the way, I'm going to ruin your life. I'm um, drip feeding you still. You go, what? 20 properties, two years. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> No, but um, the AI team are here to hold your hand. So if you are new, um, or even if you're not, it's what we do is quite different to what others do. Um, and having a sounding board or someone to ask questions to, ask questions all the time, um, so you understand it, and we'll be there to guide you as well. Gemma asks more questions than anyone I've ever come across. She's like, tell me about this, tell me about that. And I think that's really cool, right? Like sometimes people ask questions that I've, come across like not just my office but just in life in general they ask questions it's like you question stupid because you just keep asking the same question over and over again right but Gemma asks very important I always see when I explain something to you Gemma's like oh yeah now I've got it and she never asked a question again but she asked lots of questions that's why she's so knowledgeable for now and that's why yeah like, yeah I think as well sometimes you need to ask you don't realize the question is the question at the very bottom yeah. So you're asking these questions and you're chipping away. Yeah. So the whole inflation thing, it meant nothing to me for a long time. There's lots of things that you've been like, tell <laughs> yeah. me about this. Like about the interest rates when it went up the other week. And, yeah. like, and it's like, you know, I want to know this. Like, and it was Melbourne Cup Day where it all fell into place. I drove home crying. I was driving for an hour and a half crying because everything had kind of sunk in of how much I didn't know. 
But yeah. now I do know, and I was actually very overwhelmed by it. So I try and... Yeah, I remember I sort of made you upset because Gemma loves animals, and I made some jokes about animals, and uh, I thought I upset her, but it was like, really, that you got it? And it was like, it was cool. It was cool. It's like an awakening. You came marching in, yeah. and you were like, this has happened. We're all fucked if you ever done this. And I was like, oh. <laughs> um, but no, I, yeah, I think it's important that we do keep it quite separate. And... Yeah. If you do need help or if you don't need help with it, um, I'm here to hold your hand if you're Everybody's nervous. journey is like different, you know, like sometimes I speak to people for the first time and they're like, hey, I just want to buy property. Sometimes I actually just had someone the other day say, I think some of the stuff you say is very fucking weird, but I really appreciate your and respect your, you know, view on the properties and I want your help on properties. It's like, that's cool. And, you know, sometimes people go around, they're like, oh, I've seen this Birchie and, you know, have a good chat. And everybody's position is different um, and it doesn't matter who you are, what you're trying to do, we can help people even if you feel like you can't, you know, push through that next level and I think in the last two and a half years you've pushed through lots of different barriers that you've had as yeah. Yeah. hurdles and challenges and stuff like that. My whole life has been pushing through barriers, it's never been easy. I think that's why people say, oh, Birch, you're so humble and down to earth, you should be a wanker because of how, you know, things that you do and it's like I'm always pushing myself into that next level where I'm still shit, right? Like I'm still pushing myself and it's like, you know, I, I want to be vulnerable to myself to be able to push through that next mm. level. There's always a gatekeeper to hold you accountable. There's always something you don't know. There's always something you need to improve on yourself. There's some way that you need to, you know, become a better version of yourself. And mm. I think that seeking for those answers, like that's why I'm just like never, oh yeah, I'm happy. I could be sitting here going, oh, I made it and all this sort of stuff. But I just, I want to push it forward further. That's where the fun is. So Level learning. Up. Leveling up. There you go. Up. Easy. If you want to level up, call Gemma. We'll chat soon, guys. I like that tagline. <laughs> Bye. Have a good one. Bye for now.